everyone. Thank you very much for attending our new little class today. And my name is Akira, and this is Megumi, my colleague, and she's making spurb uh, udon noodles, like fresh noodles on a shinuchi machine, like we're going to talk about today. And the shinuchi machine is actually the oldest um, model that we've been selling, uh, we've been shipping like over the past four, four decades, uh, 40 years. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it, like, you know, by understand like what, you know, what, what it can do, like what it can, like what it's bad at doing, like what it's good at doing, like, you know, we can dig deeper into uh, noodle making methods of high hydration noodles. And then, you know, uh, it's you know, by understanding that, you know, we can learn to sort of what kind of enhance our like production methods and the noodle making uh, production on a daily basis. So. Uh, please watch this class to the end and we'll appreciate it. So let's get into the class. So um, this is the regional Udo map in Japan. This is the map of Japan. Um, you know, there are many, many regional Udon noodles in Japan. And uh, we did a class on um, Sanuki Udon, you know, which is, uh, well, originated like in this prefecture that we are headquartered in. Um, it's called Kagawa, uh, which had the um, name Sanuki, old name. Um, previously, that's why, well, this Sanuki Udon, which is actually the most um, popular, most famous uh, type of Udon noodles in the world. Um, you know, we, we did a class on this uh, before um, previously. So if you're interested in knowing, about, knowing more about this Udon noodles, um, please check our YouTube channel for the previous uh, recording. And so Udon, right? Uh, so Shinichi Machine, uh, why I'm talking about udon is that like Shinichi machine is primarily designed to do this type of noodles specifically. And um, Shinichi is actually uh, means, well, the best, you know, selected out of many and in Japanese. And then like, you know, we named this machine that name um, because, you know, it was revolutionary in a way that like, because there was no, at the time, like there was no, noodle or commercial noodle making machines that can fit into well fit in like work in a small kitchen of like noodle restaurants at the time right and then you know that the machines that's capable of, like producing um authentic you know udon noodles that are like as good as you know what like all these like noodle making artisans are making you know like these these guys like you know who have like years and years of experience making fresh noodles from scratch, right? Um, so you know, there's no commercial uh, noodle making uh, machines that are available at the time and then that can fit in the small kitchen. And because at the time we had noodle machines, but like all these machines are separated, like in terms of like functionality, you know, mixer, right? And then press machine over there. And then so uh, the, the rollers, roll, rolling unit, is over there and like cut you know it has the cutting separate cutting unit so um at the time like if you if we are to like kind of make noodles by well machine um you know like our, our own make uh, fresh noodles at the time right you know we had to like have like separate space right separate space you know uh to house all these machines for for us to be able to like make uh, fresh noodles for by ourselves right so so that was revolutionary, you know, that this machine was um, designed to um, do. And then, um, so udon noodles, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of unique um, type of noodle, you know, that's been around in Japan like for hundreds of years. Like it has soba and udon noodles have much, much longer history than ramen does in Japan. And um so you know people used to make them like of course by hand like 100 years ago like you know there was no machines you know that allowed them to do it so um they had to do them by hand so you know um in the how we can make authentic udon noodles right from scratch you know we we need to go through these processes and it actually takes two days which it takes uh, two days to make um and sort of like udon, udon authentic udon noodles so um, first thing, like we make dough, right? Basically, so mixing, you know, hydration, like uh, flour and water and the salt. Um, then we mix them and then uh, make dough, right? And after that, 
uh, we do the resting process. Uh, it's the first one, first resting process, like we do it twice. And it's the first resting process, and that's two hours. And and there's a press uh, process. And again, like I said that, like, you know, people, well, in the old days, like people used to, you know, do, the, do it by hand, like make them by hand. So what they did was like, um, you know, I, I kind of talked about it like before in the previous class, but um, they had to walk the dough, right? Because it's a soft noodle and, you know, to to be able to like, you know, develop this uh, gluten uh, network that, you know, got that that's translated into a like, good noodle texture, uh, we have to walk the dough, right? You have to walk the dough. Um, then so, well, to, Kind of like efficiently, you know, do that. Uh, people used to actually use their feet, so they literally um, step in the dough, right, to uh, to press it, to walk the dough, um, to develop good structure. And but like, well, the the area of the like area that like you know can, feet can walk, you know, like kind of limited. So they have to, um, you know, it, it takes a, a lot of time, long time, like to press it with their feet. Um, then, you know, because they, we had to, we would have to like, well, walk the dough, like, well, the entire areas of the dough, like kind of like equally. So it's, it's a difficult job and it's a, it's a tough, like labor intensive job. So it was, you know, it was hard for them. Like, so we, um, in Shinuch machine, like we, um, developed this like press machine that, you know, makes it like really easy. So, and after that, like, uh, we do, we go into like resting process and then that's, that's overnight. And um, the second day we come in and we um, thin it and then we'll she like, you know, make it, make it thinner and then uh, cut it and portion it and cook it. So I'm gonna go through like each of these processes um, uh, in detail, like uh, in a minute um, to explain what the change machine is designed to do. But so um, this is the Shinuch machine, and uh, it's an only one <coughs> machine. So it's it's compact. Uh, it has like everything. Like it's, it has a mixer unit, compress unit, um, roller unit, and cutter unit. And <coughs> this machine is actually can be split into two parts. And uh, basically, a lower uh, bottom unit. The mixer unit and pressing is like bottom unit, like you can make dough, right? You can make dough, and then um, on the upper unit, like it has cutter unit and there's a roller unit. So um, actually, a lot of a lot of customers like using this machine, or I mean, some of them are doing is that like so they put the bottom unit like in the back of the kitchen, and then put that uh, this upper unit like in the storefront, where you know customers can see, right? So um, in a self-serve, like, we don't shop, like, setting, right? So people, like, you know, we, we line up, like, and then, like, you know, wait, wait a turn uh, for uh, our noodles to be cooked, like, you know, to get, like, our noodles and they line up, right, towards the cashier, right? And then, um, so while we're waiting, right, um, these customers, we would, like, you know, start sheeting the dough and then uh, cutting it. So. So it's like, um, you know, well, waiting for, it's like kind of boring, right? Just waiting, but like, you know, so we see like, um, you know, our noodles are being actually, it's not our noodles, but like, well, noodles are being like sheeted and then cut, it, cut right, and then into noodles. And so these are, these noodles are like kind of being cooked in front of us. So it's, it's like, kind of like entertaining to like our eyes, right? And the customer's eyes. So it's a piece of equipment that you can show off to your customers. So like, um, so th this is like part of like what um, Shinju Machine is designed to do. So like kind of entertain the customers. So that, you know, we want well, some, like we, we have an option, like, you know, we put that upper unit, well, like well, you can, or well, we can put the like whole thing, right? In the store front to show, uh, you know, how we make um, our noodles. And that's also like, um, part of like, you know, uh, what uh, gives the customers like, so like peace of mind that we actually make our own food, right, in front of customers. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's something, um, you know, machine to machine is designed to do. So um, going through all each of these processes, um, I, I talked about this before and um, 
yeah, this slide. So basically, um, so we are making dough first, right? And then uh, making dough means, so we are making the, the kind of unique, um, the noodle texture, you know, which um, is basically the deliciousness of noodles. And, um, and I can't emphasize this enough, you know, I've been, I've been talking about it a lot, like in the previous classes, but like, I can't emphasize this enough, but like, you know, weighing up like ingredients, the right ratio is the most important step um, in making noodle making. And because if you screw this up, right, if you just screw up, like screw up like all the ratios or like um, the weight of the ingredients, each of the ingredients, this step, like the rest of the process, you know, wouldn't matter because, you know, you, you're making something different, right? So uh, you need to follow your recipe and then the right ratios and weighing of the ingredients. And uh, so there was a mixing, resting, first resting, pressing, and second resting. So weighing the ingredients, so we don't know those concepts like solid ingredients and liquid ingredients. And uh, liquid ingredients, then hydration ratio is around 50%. And 50% means, so that's 50% of the weight of flour. So, so if you're doing like 10 kilograms of flour, right, wheat flour, and we are uh, using like five kilograms of liquid, right? And then inside this liquid, uh, it's a, it's a, what, this is what, what they need about like authentic udon noodles. And uh, basically we use a lot of salt, a lot of salt. And we're basically making salt water and the water that's, um, well, 12 to like 15% in salty level, like it's really salty. And what this salt does is just basically um, kind of tighten the gluten and basically making, like building this, helping build this gluten network inside the dough. And we use it like, like um, option as an option, like we use vinegar as well, like one percent of the weight of flour, and um, for that effect of like what it does, like please check our previous class on udon noodles. So after we get the ratios right, and a wheat flour, I'm sorry, wheat flour. So the protein content, so basically, jam is the hardness of the noodle texture, and protein content like is about like seven to nine percent. That's kind of like a middle, not, not too hard, not too soft, kind of middle. And then, um, so, you know, that's the, well, kind of wheat flour we use for udon noodles. And so the mixing, um, mixing, so it's a picture of a um, guy who's, you know, um, hydrating the dough. Like it's, it's actual process like mixing um, by hand. And well, he's, he's behind, but like, so basically these fingers, right? These fingers, like moving, movement of these fingers, like it's basically agitating the flower, agitating the flower using these fingers. So um, the mixer of Shinuchi has like mixing blades that look like, like kind of like a poles, like the kind of like, kind of like sticks um, that, uh, that sort of like mimic this, um, you know, the human fingers and it's like, um, so that this mixer mixing um, is like kind of mimics that like, well, agitation movement of the fingers. And uh, as it agitates the flower, like with the like water added, salt water added to, and um, you know, it, it causes this um, agitation granulation, granulation and just each flour grain like kind of gradually come together, right, to form crumbles of dough. And you know, as it gets mixed with the water, so a liquid. And so like small particle of flour, like kind of gradually, you know, get bigger and bigger. And so like we are making, that's how we sort of like hydrate the dough and making the dough or the udon, uh, udon noodle, uh, udon flour, udon noodle. And so that's the mixing and then that's the station granulation. And um, so we are basically like uh, hydrating the dough, I mean the flour well, um, the salt water, and then uh, so that, that helps um, develop the uh, gluten. But uh, after that, we uh, do the resting process. Resting, like this is the first one, first resting process. And you know, I, I talked about before, but like for finish the resting process, like so we promote hydration. 
um, you know, it's, it further uh, promotes hydration in the resin process. And it get in degassing, it degass like all these uh, air pockets like in, inside the dough, you know, we want to remove them. We want to like get rid of them. So like we, we helpfully degass them. And then um, has, by activating the enzyme like inside wheat flour, like it has, it's gonna have like better uh, wheat flavor. And, um, you know, mixing, um, well, get like, uh, applies a lot of stress, internal stress inside the dough. So like, you know, it helps relax the dough, internal stress of the dough. Okay, and uh, the temperature is important. So like resting process, like in these senses is kind of similar to kind of proofing, you know, kind of bread making. And, you know, as we know, like temperature is important. And so, but like, I like like um, proof, proofing like in the bread making uh, the the temperature is kind of lower than 20 28 degrees Celsius uh, for two hours. That's first uh, resting process, and so this is like what like through you know years of research and development like we found this optimal like resting line, and that conditioned the dough like an ideal uh, makes it like ideal dough conditions, and. So after that, like we do the, well, we, we had to walk the dough, right? We had to walk the dough. And as I already kind of talked about, like in the old days, you know, they, the best way they had is step on the dough, step on the dough. But like, of course, no, we're not, not like with the bare, bare feet or anything. Like they, you know, they have that some, like some kind of like a protective like sheet over the dough, like to, of course, like, you know, keep that. Um, keep it like clean, like, you know, keep it from like anything, any bacteria or anything. Um, so they, but like, you know, there are some actually udon specialty shop in Kagawa that actually still do this process, go through this process. But, um, you know, it's, it's a hard job. And it, it, again, like it's a difficult job, you know, to, because we have to, you know, work the entire areas of dough, like, you know, with the equal amount of pressure. So it's a, it's a difficult like for um, it's like human beings to do like you know it's an every day right um, a daily job so we use this press unit and um, so we um, press it and then um, you know we they ha it has this like kind of flat um, board right that that presses like all the dough um, with the equal amount of pressure and then um, we fold it right we fold the sides of the dough in, like inwards to the center and then, you know, press it again. And so like we um, beat this process like three to five times. And then that that way, this way, right, we can, you know, apply kind of equal amount of pressure like in the, onto the entire areas of dough. So that's that's more efficient um, than, you know, like stepping on, it, stepping on the dough to walk it. <clears throat> and after that, like, yeah, as you can imagine, right, it's like we walk the dough, like, you know, in the press, uh, pressing process. And then, well, of course, like they'll get a lot of stress. And then, and then I kind of talked about it before, but like, it's, it's like working out your muscle, you know, like after you walk out your muscle, like for hours, like, you know, you need that rest, right. To further develop your muscle. And that's how you do it. Like you walk out in the rest, you walk out and rest, like that's how you develop muscle. So, um, after, you, you could imagine, right, it's like uh, how much stress that like dog gets like from the pressing. Um, so, you know, he has to rest. So like, um, he, then, you know, we had, we had like lower the temperature uh, to 18 degrees Celsius and then let it rest for uh, 24 hours overnight. So that's a second resting process. And then by this point, the dough, um, the texture, right, the texture of dough is, is complete. It's, Totally developed. So the second day, second day, right? The next day, like we come in. So all we have to do is just thin it. So it's kind of similar to like you know, for those of you like who have watched our class, like an enrichment machine or like ramen making um, noodle class. So it's kind of similar to like you know, second combining um, process. So like after second combining process, the dough is complete, right? In terms of the noodle texture, I mean dough texture. So all we had to do is just thin it, right? So thin it, and I cut it, and uh, uh, cook it, right? Cook it, right? And then cooking is also important. And 
uh, wash it. Wash it like uh, so because this is going to be like a lot of starch that are coming out like on the noodle surface, and that's uh, kind of slimy and like some people don't like the texture. So we want to wash them to remove all the starch to have like kind of clean uh, texture. So we we wash them sometimes like depending on the the noodle dish we're serving. And so again like you know to make to retain right kind of like because because like um gluten network um inside the dough is it's like fully developed like up to this point and but like by you know we, we could still like damage it we could still um almost like you know destroy it by um thinning it like drastically so we we have this in this uh, machine we have this so like kind of shifting gear like you know uh, then um, as we so shift from like 1 to 12 like upwards um, we are narrowing the roller gap so usually we shift like we start from one first gear and the second right but one by one one by one to like gradually narrow the roller gap as like at each round of sheeting. So like as we sheet like one time, right? And then like we um, move the gear like up, right? And then so shift it up like just one by one. You know, if, like, if we skip it, if we skip like three gears or something, um, that, that would uh, damage the well, food network inside the dough. So, you know, which which is not, which translates, may, we may translate into like poor noodle texture. So. That's why we have this kind of system that will kind of gradually narrow the roller gap. And yeah, and then um, this roller system, system it also has like another uh, mechanism that like sort of, um, one, of the, one of the rollers actually moves backwards like when the dough sheet goes through, because like when the, uh, which means machines roller like you know it doesn't move right it doesn't move like it just like, kind of stays put in the position right um, but like in this machine which you roller unit uh, one of the rollers actually sort of like bounces back because like if you know when when the like she, those sheet is like going through and um, then if uh, the the roll stays in the same position and like it just well gets thinned but like you know, we want to like kind of gently uh, thin it. And so has this kind of like roller system, like one of the rollers is like has a sp actually spring system that um, allows it to sort of like you know, moves backward, like kind of um, to sort of like, you know, protect the um, gluten structure from like getting, getting damaged. So it's, it's kind of, well, you know, it has all has to like with like kind of retention of the the, um, the good noodle texture, and um, so this roller like so the huge machine has like this roller um, kind of mechanism that like kind of allows it to 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 be able to, like protect the uh, the dough uh, texture. So because like it's high hydration ratio, high hydration ratio noodle, like it's, it just which makes the noodle texture softer. So um, unlike you know the low hydration ratio noodle like enrichment machines are good at making um shimichi machine has this feature that helps will retain the like noodle texture okay and uh this is a cross section like you know so we are looking at the roller unit by from the side right from the sideways and then um so we are inserting the dough sheet into the roller unit right and then like just the, the dough sheet like comes out from the um, from the upper side, right? Upper side of the roll unit. And um, there's another like there's like this sensor, right? That's that's beaming the red light onto the uh, sheet of dough, like that's going to the roller unit. And what it's doing is, is it's like it's it's actually measuring the thickness of the dough that's going in to the roller. And so so we can now um, you know what the what that what that like make like the thickness of the dough is like now in real time like you know, instead of like you know us like measuring it like by hand right with a caliper or something 
So we can we can actually see uh, you know what the thickness is of the dough that's being sheeted right now. So the thickness is um, basically determined by the well, was like thinning rollers, right? Thinning rollers. But like uh, the width, right? Width is determined by because the cutting, right? Cutting with the cutter, like so. So after we thin the dough um, to a certain thickness, and which like three millimeter, um, in the sun you don't know like ideal, um, well the shape, ideal like measurement, like the cross shape section shape um, is the three millimeter in thickness and five millimeter in width, right? And uh, width is determined by the actually conveyor belt, the speed of conveyor belt like that, that's carrying the dough sheet into the cutter. And what cutter is doing is just, you know, cutter is cutter blade, that knife is just like uh, moving up and down, up and down the same speed. Um, and then like dough sheet is going to the cutter, right? And then like conveyor belt is actually carrying this dough sheet into the cutter. And so the speed, we can control the speed actually. We can control speed, which conveyor carries dough sheet in the cutter. And so by actually decreasing the speed, um, yeah, decreasing the speed uh, where um, decreasing the width. And by increasing, like making it faster, um, we're, we're actually widening the width. So you, you can see that later, like even when we actually make the noodles. And um, um, yeah, maximum width, like in a, like a, well, the regular like standard configuration with this machine, which can be actually adjusted. Um, you know, if you, if you have like, you know, if you want to make it even wider, um, the sort of like factory setting, um, but like it's, it's a six millimeter, like around six millimeter and the minimum uh, thickness, right? Thickness determined by the thinning of rollers. And you now because of the, uh, it was like retention with that dosh uh, noodle texture that, you know, we have to like gradually thin it, right? So we, that means that like we need to, um, well, make like a multiple rounds of sheeting Right, so it takes time. Like if you make want to make like in you know, a very thin noodle thing um, dough, uh, because we need to, you know, make rounds and rounds of sheeting uh, at maybe like at the same like a gear, um, same like roller uh, gap, right? To to get to the certain because the dough bounces back as well, dough bounces back as well. So um, so it's uh yeah so like. So like, so like a commercially viable like kind of thickness. So like minimum minimum thickness, like the small size that we you know we can do like kind of in an efficient way. Um, we figure like that would be like maybe like two point two point five millimeters or maybe up up to like two millimeters. And so that's the kind of limitation of the huge machines, kind of like noodle size, but. Um, Basically, the right image, the that's a cutter, right? And so the cutting blade, knife is like you know we're moving up and down, and so then uh, by controlling the speed of conveyor, uh, we can control the width of the noodles. And then the left image, like it just shows the um, it's a, it's a tray, right? That like moves like side side to side underneath the like cutter cutter unit cutting unit, and um, what it's doing is it's collecting the noodle strand that's being dropped like from the cutter unit so that like when you slide out the tray like a plastic um, board the noodles are like kind of lined up like nicely so this is a feature of machine to machine so i've been using this little chart noodle texture chart like a lot like in the previous classes about like so basically, um, just briefly explain like some protein content of flour, you know, that's used to make these different types of noodles. Um, basically, the higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture, right? And moisture content, like that's a uh, horizontal line. Uh, that's basically hydration ratio of the noodles. And less, uh, smaller hydration, the harder the noodle texture. 
And so you can see the green circle on the left, top left corner, like that's the famous Hakata ramen, uh, tonkotsu ramen noodles, it's thin and hard noodle, uh, it's thin and hard noodles. And then like when I try to find that um, udon noodles, right? That's in the opposite corner, right? That's thick and soft noodle. So that's the, it's like opposite type of noodle, like in terms of, you know, noodle texture and noodle size. So it's a thick and soft noodles. And you see this kind of, um, kind of red, kind of, well, a square, like rectangular um, area, right? That's, that's what, that's the area of like noodles that are like huge machines good at making. So it's kind of very small um, area um, that like coverage that like the huge machines good at, but but like that's what like huge machines is very very good at making. So as I said, like noodle size wise, when it, when we magnify this, like and uh, you know it has kind of for the noodle size wise, right? Like that's 2.4, maybe like, maybe we can get it up to like 2.0. And, but like high duration ratio wise, like that's over 45%, 45%. And then we, we talked about it like in the last class, but like high duration ratio and dough size, noodle size. So in, in terms of high duration ratio, uh, what the huge machine is good at doing is like any anything over 45% and maybe like up to like 55%. And um, because of the, um, because of like, you know, construction, the, uh, the, the machine, right? And so between like 25 and 45%, um, the rich machines, you know, good at doing. So in that range, like in that range of like hydration ratio, of like noodles, uh, rich machines good at doing, but like, over uh, 45%, um, your signature measures good at. Like, so, and then in terms of noodle size, so basically, the higher the hydration ratio, ratio, the softer the noodle, uh, softer the noodle texture. And softer the noodle texture, um, the noodle size tends to be bigger. Um, because when you think about it, like, if you make, so like, you know, thin noodles, like it's almost like Hakata, Tonkotsu noodles, that's, well, over, you know, 50% high, high duration ratio, you know, that makes it like really soft. So if you, so you have like noodles that are like thin as, you know, one, one millimeter thin noodles and it's like very soft. And that's that's not really good texture. Like, you know, if you bite into like, it just doesn't happen like much, much bite, like you don't feel much. So, um, so the noodle size tends to be bigger, like as the hydration ratio uh, becomes you know, higher. And that's a tendency to like, of course, there are some exceptions to that, but like basically that's, that, that stands. So, and um, so noodle recipes, noodle recipe wise, um, so the wheat um, flour, right? Like protein content of flour. Um, so there are some excep exceptions to this, but like, you know, when you're making like high hydration ramen noodles, uh, which we, you know, which um, you may use, in which we may use like uh, flour uh, that's like high, like as high as like 11% or something, like in the protein content. Um, then, well, the viscosity, starch, um, the, this is very important too. Uh, so higher the viscosity, the better the, um, the noodle tissue, like, you know, it makes it more elastic, um, viscous. So, when we are talking about like thick noodles, it's a, it's a you know it's an important point when we are searching for um, good flour, good wheat flour. Hydration ratio again like forty five percent and probably up to like fifty five percent. And noodle size um, again you know two millimeter like two up to like maybe like six millimeter. So well the smaller noodle size well of course like less bites like so like bit like you know maybe softer and then uh, the thicker more bite and without not it's soft uh, cold or hot like or warm um basically like higher the temperature like uh, the softer so um you know it's, it's uh, it affects the noodle texture as well so these are these are the variables that you need to think about when making 
the, your neural texture. And uh, so we we had this picture, right? Pictures like in the last class, but like, so these are the images of like all these uh, dough, right? They're like, you know, varying in uh, hydration ratios and then 25%, 33% and 40%. So these are the types of noodle dough that like rich men machines are like rabbit noodle machines are you know good at making and 45 percent this is actually image of high hydration ramen noodles and this is what like huge machines also you know good at making and 50 percent um you know, that's udon dough and you know we we kind of explained like in the last class we like uh, why uh, rich machines are good at like making um, noodles that are like uh, in a range of like 25% and 45% hydration ratio. So it's basically the uh, the softness and uh, like sizes of the dough you know that are um, that are made like well at a different different hydration ratios and then 25% hydration ratio dough. That's that's really small like you saw in the picture. Um, it's, it's almost like powder. It's almost like still like, you know, flour, right? And it's very hard. And so we, we need like, um, you know, bigger rollers um, to sort of like force that kind of dough into the, through the roller to like make a sheet of dough. And um, with the rich uh, machines, um, you know, it's designed basically to make a big chunk of dough, right? Big chunk of dough. So um, it's it's yeah. It's, I I can say like it's it's hard, but it's um, mechanically it's like it's it's almost like impossible. So um, it's it's just hard, like right. So they like um, the the those sizes will be very small still. So you know. Using this kind of like press machine, um, press unit, like it's, yeah, it is. It is technically, physically, like impossible uh, for Shinichi machine to like process that kind of dough. So um, for you, well, for like for those of you like who are, you know, for those of you who are like kind of thinking about doing the noodles that are like, um, they're in like twenty five and uh, like forty five hundred generation range. Um, you should use Richmond machine. But like if you're, you know, thinking of doing like Noodles are like over 45%. Um, we can do it better with the uh, Shinuchi machine. So production capacity and speed, um, I have to explain this way. And so um, it, it depends on what kind of noodle you're making. You know, if you're making like pasta noodle, pasta, like some kind of pasta fettuccine or something, then it's different. But like, and then uh, if you're making um, some sort of like a high hydration rate ramen noodles that wouldn't uh, require like you know long resting um, process, then you know this is this may be different. But like uh, I'm just talking about like making sanuki udon right uh, production right, and then so I, I said that like it takes two days right. Uh, they want like we prep the dough, and um, so about like 100 grams of 100 grams of like flour translates into one serving of uh, cooked noodles because like um, that's 100 grams and then 50 percent hydration ratio that's 1.5 150 grams of fresh noodles but when we cook it and uh, we cook it um, you know that it absorbs the water right cooking water and then it expands into like maybe what by 1.6 1.7 times bigger in terms of weight so that that would like become like 20 250 grams or something per serving out of 100 grams of um flour so, so 120 servings like that's 18 kilograms of dough right like that's that's in fresh noodle before before cooking for batch right and then times like 10 so again, like we do like mixing, right? Like for like five minutes and then, you know, put in the um, resting uh, machine, like in the resting chamber and then rest it for two hours, right? And then immediately we will do like another batch of mixing five minutes and then put it in the uh, resting chamber again, like for two hours. 
to repeat the process, right? And then uh, the first batch that's out of like resin, first resin process, we do the press, right? We do press machine pressing. And then uh, the press usually takes like, you know, just five minutes or so. Um, and then, you know, we, we again, after that, like, we put in the second resting and that's 24 hours, right? So we're not gonna do anything like until day two, right? Next day. So basically uh, what it takes like five minutes of mixing, two hours with first resting and then uh, five minutes of pressing. So that translates into about like 3.7 hours of um, yeah, operation, like just prepping the dough and that translates into like 51 kilograms of dough uh, made in an hour, but including the first resting time. So that's day one. So the second day, like we do like sheeting, cutting, and portioning, right? And well, you know, we are making like sanuki udon noodles, like that's like really, th they're th really thick noodles. Um, so time is that like, so we sheet, cut, and portion it, right? And then, so this machine is capable of like doing like 300 servings per hour. In an hour, that's 45 kilograms of dough, right? So we are basically, you know, sheeting, cutting, um, the the dough, right? That's that's prepared like the day before. And so we could do do like we could sheet a cut and portion uh, this much of dough. That's 100, 180 kilograms of dough. That's around this like about like 1,200 servings in four hours. You know, but like in well in a like store setting, like it's not going to be like you know we continually um, sheet a cut and portion like for post straight hours, but like, you know, we probably get older and then like sheet and cut and, you know, in the portion like in you know, the cook it and solve it, like, you know, as we get older, right? As we get older. So, so we usually like in a udon shop setting, like we just, um, you know, sheet and cut uh, noodles to order. So, um, yeah, so that's, and then I, one thing I have to do, like, note here is that like well because this is that in terms of like noodles are like three millimeter in thickness but if you're making if you're making like thinner noodles like you know two millimeter noodles or like, like some kind of like more high hydration ramen noodles or thinner or like even like flat noodles like you know, thinner than three millimeter then um this well production speed like performance um 300 servings per hour like 45 kilograms per hour that's going to be less. That's going to be less because, as I said, like, you know, we have to make more rounds of sheeting, right? And then the cutting also, like, takes a uh, longer time, too. So the production capacity speed um, decreases as we uh, make um, smaller sized noodles. So that's one thing that we have to notice, like, you know, we have to note when we're using the machine. machine. And uh, different different applications that the machine can use can be used right uh, so like you know we did a bunch of like all these um well different ingredients needed into the noodles and then this is these are really easy but like you know very very good uh we will need like you know some curry powder like um, chili powder and a lot of other things so these are very easy to do um but very good. And then, um, so this is the kind of pasta that like Shinuchi machine can make. And then, so making pasta is just, you know, matter of like uh, recipe, right? Or what ingredients, what what, we, what flour you use and, you know, like how, how much like eggs and stuff like you use, right? Olive oils maybe. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then that's the right image, um, the, the kind of pasta that we made um, the, using the Shinuchi machine. It's very thick, but like it's very soft and chewy. And then left image uh, is like, it's actually udon dish, but like, um, because udon noodles, like so we cook the udon noodles, right? And then like, you know, cook them for like, the sanuki udon noodles, cook them for like, you know, five minutes or so. And then uh, we just take that, take them right out of a pot, right? And then we, well, we prepare like, so like, you know, a piece of cheese and a piece of like, uh, the eggs, right? The raw eggs. And then just put that like hot, you know, cooked noodles into the bowl and then just store them, right? Store them well. And then all these like uh, eggs and cheese are, you know, get cooked. 
you know, because the, the noodles are so hot, right? That because the high temperature of the from noodles, um, you know, you can cook all these ingredients in the bowl, right, together, and and you can just serve it right away, like right, you know, serve it uh, right out of the the bowl, right? It's 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 kind of like a pasta, you know, it's kind of like some some types of pasta are made, and so it's it's very easy to do and. Uh, something that you you know you may be able to do from your uh, business for your business and uh, it's another um, udon dishes and like uh, Japanese and uh, they're cooked and they're washed and then and chilled and then served right and then it's another type that's kind of similar and again like you know udon noodles like it's very it's like translucent like it's very chewy elastic soft so it's very unique. It has like a very unique texture to it, and it's it's a curry you noodle. Know, like it's a very popular dish in Japan. Like you know, there's even like specialty like curry udon shop that like like specialize in serving like curry udon shop, udon dishes. And uh, of course, like this is the you know um, hot soup udon noodles like in some well that's called like kake udon uh, in Japan, and like that's the most popular. Um, one like throughout throughout the year and um, it's like kind of soul food in Kanawa. And so what a shimish machine can design to do, right? So like a shimish machine can, is packed with like all these uh, technologies that, you know, allows, uh, you know, you or anyone to be, you know, to be a noodle master, you know, with the years and years of experiences, right? The skills of noodle making origins or I would say like that. I would have to say that they're like kind of specialized in, well, making you know noodles that are like kind of udon noodles, like high hydration and a thick and soft chewy noodles. But and then um, then you shoot like even like you know, professional noodle makers like you know for like with that like years and years of experience like you know they're human beings so like you know they um, sometimes they may, they may it's inevitable that like they may make mistakes right, so. In terms of like you know that there are many variables right that affect the quality right so you know consistency but like this huge machine uh, it brings consistency in the quality right and then of course like precision right precision in terms of noodle size um, and then the noodle quality like the, the condition of the dough and yeah, of course like um, well noodle making is like with the years of experience or like after all, like they're human beings, so you know they they catch a cold or something, and then they you know, take a day off, right? But like you know, change machines doesn't, right? Um, so it brings a durability, and um, durability means you know consistent, um, stable like production of um, you know fresh noodles for business. So um, you know if you are uh, kind of you know, if you're like kind of thinking of doing this type of noodle, particular type of noodle, and uh, you, you know, if you see a market, like local market that craves for this type of noodle, a uh, huge machine may be uh, something you might want to consider. So that's uh, what I have for the lecture, and uh, let's um, start making noodles. Uh, and um, let's move to our next room where we have the huge machine. So this is a this is Shinuchi machine um, person and yeah so uh, so we were making making udon noodles here and so as I kind of explained right um, so this is a flour that's like eight like around like 8.5% protein content. That's for like specifically uh, blended for udon noodles um, in Japan. And then um, this is the uh, salt, right? So we are adding this much of salt to this much of flour, right? So that that's that's kind of a lot of salt and the vinegar. That's usually 1% of the weight of the flour. And but like this water and it's like, this is a liquid liquid ingredients right these are solid ingredients and usually like we do the hydration ratio like 50 percent so 50 percent to the weight of the flour so um yeah and then like the mixer 
unit that Shift Machine has like it's 12.5 kilograms of uh, flour, right? So like you can mix up to up to 12.5 kilograms of in solid ingredients. And on top of it, you're adding the liquid, right? So, you know, so you're like a maximum, you're making about uh, 18.5, 18 like 8.75 kilograms of dough at the time, like at a maximum uh, from this machine. So let's uh, get started. And so we are putting the, the flour, right? Putting flour in there first. And we want to, we want to start the mixer uh, without the liquid first. So we set the timer, one minute. So we want to mix it like for one minute, just with the flour, and uh, because you know we want to sort of well break all the like chunks of the flour that are like there's any uh, into smaller pieces before we uh, start the hydration. And Megumi is um, actually dissolving this salt, right? We need to dissolve like all the salt slowly to make salt water, right? Salt water. Uh, but that's a lot of salt, right? That's a lot of salt. So we need to like, you know, put the water in there and then like stir it, milk it, and put it back in and then do it again. Just make sure that it's, it's all melted in there, right? And vinegar. So even though we add vinegar, even though we add vinegar, right? Uh, it's that well, like when we cook the noodles, like all this salt, like almost like 90, 90 percent, 95 percent of like salt and vinegar are dissolved in the cooking water. So we don't we don't taste. So like when we buy into noodles, like we don't taste much of the salt or like vinegar from the noodles, so you know don't don't worry about them. Um, so while we mix it, right? So maybe we prepare the dough in advance so that we don't waste any time just watching the mixer. So. Look at the dough, right? This the size of dough, like, so one chunk of dough, right? one chunk of dough is it's about like size of golf ball, right? Size of golf ball. And so that's that's like how big the, the noodle, I mean, dough chunk is. It's a very soft dough. And, you know, as I said, well, in, in Kagawa prefixed like in Sanuki uh, Udon, world like you know or um other types of udon noodles like you know people used to uh use their feet right to um step on them right step on them like you know work the dough but like um you know it's, it's a hard like difficult work to do so we well invented this uh first unit you know it's um it's very that applying equal amount of pressure to the like, entire area of the dough. So it's, so it's, uh, so like it makes the job like this, it's actually labor, very labor intensive job and like, but it makes the job like really easy. So you press it right and then like, you know, the dough flatten it, like, and then, so all these, like, all the, like, crumbles dough, like, gums, like, one big uh, chunk of dough, right? And then, so, look at what she's doing, like, she's, like, folding them, folding the size inwards, and so that, like, outside the dough, like, outer, outer areas of dough, you know, gets pushed, pressed, and then uh, it worked, right? So that in this way, um, we're applying equal amount of pressure to the entire area of the dough. And that, which is like really hard to do, like, you know, like in hand making, um, you got to have like experience and it like, it takes you long hours. Um, 
almost like 30 minutes, like 45 minutes to, well, just imagine yourself like kind of stepping on the door, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, trying to, trying to press like, well, entire area of the door. That's a, that's a hard job. And again, like, so this is the third time, third time like pressing, right? Third time pressing. So we do it like, um, we do this press machine, press process like three to five times, depending on the condition with the dough. So the mixing is done. So like mixing, just just five minutes, just five minutes. And I kind of talk about like in the previous class about like uh, so higher the hydration ratio, the shorter the mixing time. Uh, so it's just five minutes. Um, but then like if you're doing like a Hakata ramen noodle or something, or you need to mix it for um, you know 15 minutes. A long time. Uh, sorry, like she, yeah, my mistake. Like so, she did. Like she mixed it for like four minutes first, and then um, put the remaining with water, and then uh, mix it for one more minute. Like so, a total mixing time for like five minutes, and then after pressing, right? Um, what she's doing is like dividing the dough into uh, smaller pieces, small piece like you know, small enough. For how to be able to um, sheet it, sheet it and cut it, because the this work table like huge machine is like limited, right? So she's dividing the dough into like kind of small, you know, small enough pieces, like for how to be able to kind of sheet it like kind of efficiently on this uh, machine. So that that's about like 1.1 kilograms, to like maybe like about five kilograms per piece. And so she's putting the dough, the plastic bag, and you know, this is the first day, like day one prep, like prepping the dough, the last process. And you know, putting the dough back into the the resting chamber, and remember the the temperature we have to set, right? It's 18 degrees Celsius. This is the second second resting process. <laughs> So setting the temperature to 18, right? 18. So this is a resting chamber that like, so she did set the uh, temperature to like 18 and then like currently that's 10, actually temperature like 11. And so that it turns on the heater to um, increase the temperature inside. And, but like, you know, she, she's well prepared. So like she um, prepared the dough, right, in advance. Yesterday, right, this is a, like dough from yesterday. So let's say that like, this is the day two. It's pretty that this is the day two. And then, <coughs> and she's going to, uh, First, like we need to like flatten it and yeah, sheet it to the final thickness. So she, she basically has to um, flatten it 
to the thickness, you know, that's thin enough, like, that's, that's thin enough for that dough to be able to, like, kind of go through, pass through the, uh, the bar, the safety bar. So the safety bar is, like, low enough for um, any, any human hand to kind of go through, right, go through. So, yeah, and then, but, like, the dough needs to go through, like, between the bar, like, underneath bar. So um, what I could do is, like, kind of still um, too thick. So she's actually using the press machine, pressing it to, like, flatten it first. You can do it by hand, but, like, it's uh, maybe too hard, right? Maybe too hard, like, maybe, like, too bouncy. So it takes your time. So um, it's a, it's a good idea to, like, use a press machine to flatten it. And then we can immediately start the sheeting process. So again, you, this machine uses sheeting like rolly, rural unit that you know allows us to be able, like gradually thin the dough, right? To retain the the noodle dough texture. That that's basically you know well networked uh, gluten inside the dough. So we need to you know we need like make like multiple rounds of sheeting by um, shifting the gear up one by one. Of course you could skip it but like you know it's a uh, it's not it's not good for um, the dough texture so yeah we shift it up one by one. And another thing, like, I want to know about, like, the sheeting process in, like, in the, the sheet machine is that, like, well, unlike Richmond machine, you know, that, uh, that, you know, like, allows you just to, like, uh, sheet it, like, in a single direction, like, one direction only, um, you, this machine allows you to be, able, like, you know, sheet it, like, thin it up multiple direction, like, just the way, like, just like how, which angle, right, you are just inserting the dough, right, to the roller unit. So um, you can uh, sheet it like multiple, multiple angles, which um, actually strengthen the dough in a way that like, if you, if you pull it, if you pull it like in different directions, um, you know, it's, it sustains the pull, right? But then like if you pull that, um, the dough, like that's like processed like an enrichment machine. Um, it kind of easily rips, like from like if you pull it from sideways. So that's that's another feature. And then, so she's actually measuring the dough thickness. See that it's it's 6.4, but like it's a millimeter. But like you know, it's she doubled it. Like she like the double sheet. Like so, you need to well divide it in half. 6.4, you know, and one and a half, like, uh, divided by two, right? So that's 3.2 millimeter in thickness. So that's a good, that's a good thickness for um, the Sanuki Udo noodles. So, you know, we can, we can start the cutting process. Just start a cutting process. And then, um, again, like, the width is determined by the speed of the conveyor belt, right? That's carrying the dough sheet, right? And then um, this Shinuchi machine has four four speeds, like four speeds uh, channels, four speeds that you can preset, right? You can preset the four speeds, the volumes, like there are four volumes, right? And like each volume, uh, you can set it. You can set it at the different speed. And uh, in the in front, you have the switches, right? You can you can switch the speeds around from one to four, right? And so depending on the type of noodle you're making, right? And you can preset the speed, right? Conveyor speed, um, which means that like width, right? Width, cut width. You can preset the cut width, and then. At the like uh, just the switching of the 
yeah, the switching of like in between like different volumes or different uh, speed, right? You could just um, sort of cutting it like and for you know different type of noodles. So as he as she slides it out, right? It's like noodles are like lined up like nicely, and so we need to you know dust the starch, right? Dust the starch, and then. So she's like, look at how she's doing. Like, so she's um, taking the noodles by center and they're kind of like combing them and then straight them, straighten them, right? And then place them in uh, um, the uh, like plastic container and uh, they are ready to be cooked in a noodle cooker. So it looks. Looks, yeah, so like these noodles, you know, I, I wish you could like touch them like they are they are very soft and then like when they are cooked and like, you know, if you bite into them like just they're very um, Very chewy like it's, it's very thick noodles, even though they're soft, right? They're thick. So like it has They have like, you know, good, good bite into them <clears throat> So that's um, that's some good noodles, and nothing like she made me prepare is um, so it's not an application that you could uh, do Richmond. I don't know. I'm sorry. Like a Chinese machine. And so it's pasta, uh, then, um, you know, so again, like it's, it's just a different recipes, you know, from like udon noodles, like and processes are kind of similar. It's very similar, but like in different, different recipes. And you, know, you can make something like this, like, you know, pasta, like, but like kind of pasta, that's like, that's, that's, I think that's very different, you know, that's, it's close to, close to like kind of handmade pasta. Handmade pasta because of the uh, hydration, like really high hydration, um, and then um, the uh, all these uh, processes, um, you know, that are used, utilized to develop the like gluten network inside the dough. So they are very similar to like. You know, handmade pasta that like made, they're made by, you know, pasta making masters. And again, like notice like how she's kind of inserting this dough into the roller unit. Like you know, she's changing the directions. She's changing the angles of like, you know, like direction like you no know, sheeting. So these this dough is like sheeted. Um, the different directions, which means that like they're kind of being strengthened, it's, it's like it's being strengthened like different directions. So at each round, like sheeting, like she's shifting the gear up, uh, which means like narrowing the roller gap gradually. And again, notice like how she's dusting the dough at each round of sheeting, just to make sure that like it's not gonna stick, right? Make sure it's not gonna stick. <clears throat> We're going to go into our tenth gear and. You can now starting to see the thickness, right? Thickness of dough, like being sheeted, right? Um, displayed on the, the thickness sensor, right? So that's 5.0 millimeter, 5.0 millimeter. Would you show it again? It's 5.1, 5.0. So, so again, like she's. Um, Measuring the uh, two sheets, two layers of this dough sheet. So you, we need to like divide it by half, right? 
So divided by two, so like 2.5-ish, one, one sheet, right? Okay, um, this is going for another round of sheeting. So it's getting, it's getting very, very thin. And then, you know, as, as it gets thinner and thinner, right, um, well, it feels softer because, well, like thinner, like, and then, like, the dough itself is very soft, right? So it's really soft. And then, um, it's it's like kind of it's like kind of like you know kind of hundring like a kind of like you know thin thin like blanket or something so as you thin it like as you thin it like further and further like you, you need to kind of handle it with care so it's gonna, it's gonna start cutting It's done cutting, and so if you slide out the, the tray, so you get all this pasta that's, um, I think like that's like really similar to like kind of, well, I, I see like a teeny, um, like, sorry, I'm not familiar with the type of pasta that's like, but like it's, you know, it's very flat and wide pasta and they're like they're they're very good um it's just that um it's probably different from you know dry pasta like other other types of pasta like you know that are like lower in hydration ratio and then and these are very similar to like you know ones that are like made by um you know pasta making origins you know we, with the years and years of experience making you know this type of pasta and so that that's what that like you know, Shinju machine is like designed to do capable of doing and um it's it's like kind of mimicking all these uh techniques and skills you know that are cultivated over years of like you know hard work by noodle making artisans and you know it's just and then like making them like efficiently right and uh so you know we pack like all these like skills and the, like techniques um by learning you know how all these like noodle master like professionals like make noodles and you know put it into the mechanics of the machines and um so the shinuchi machine is like capable of like producing this type of like high quality noodles and but like you know it takes no uh day off and it's very durable and um you know it has it's very precise and um and it's it's amazing, like it fits right into a small kitchen of a restaurant. So, uh, yeah, like, but if you are making, you know, if you're making like you know, kind of like noodles that are like low in hydration ratio, like ramen noodles, uh, this machine uh, is not for you. But like, if you go to a local market that that's you know that has like big trays right for um, this type of noodles, you know, made by. Um, professional hand making noodle making origins like and um you know like very very well textured noodles then you know, this machine may be for you know your business so 
Um, so that's what like uh, we wanted to say about like this Shinich machine. It's the oldest machine that we've been selling, we've been shipping over the world for the past 40 years. And um, yeah, uh, it's very durable. So, um, and uh, we, can, we can take advantage of it to you know, like produce superb fresh noodles. So um, if you don't have any questions, um, that's what we had for this class. And then thank you very much for attending this class. And if you like the, this class, uh, please hit the like button and um, please subscribe to this channel like, if you haven't done that. And uh, so we're pumping out why like, this kind of class, like kind of, you know, well, uh, shifted towards um, more, more like hardware, um, but you know, we're pumping out, like we've been pumping out like all these um, noodle making classes that are like kind of, you know, towards more towards like software and kind of businesses, business side of things. And uh, we've been, well, we're gonna be doing like more and more of this kind of class. And if you have any particular subjects that you are interested in learning about, like, you know, well, you know, like wish like wish to like learn about, like learn from us, um, please uh, send, a, send us emails. Um, and then like, you know, we, we want to, or like, you know, send us some comments and we want to reflect your comments in uh, our future classes. So thank you very much for attending us, taking our class, and um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.